Hello there, YouTube. I am Necrostevo, and it is time for us to embark on yet another journey in the Pokemon Premier League Season 3. This season, the Victorian Shadows are back, and we aim to shake things up a little bit more than last season. Last season, I admit, there was a lot of dust to be knocked off. There were some changes I would have made to things. In hindsight, there's more darkness I could have brought. There were more demons I could have summoned. There was more blood that could have been spilt. And yet I didn't do any of that. So how can we do better this season? How can I make sure that people are steeped in the shadows that the true Necrostevo fans know that we're capable of. At the very least, how do I strike fear into my opponent's hearts, if not their souls? With a brand new draft, that's how. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at the Pokemon that we have drafted for Season 3 in the Pokemon Premier League. If you haven't already left a like, please do so now, as I'm intending on uploading a little bit more frequently this time around. But let's get into this draft order. We were number four pick overall. That is quite different from last season where we were the last pick overall. And I was actually able to get something that I really wanted instead of just reacting on the draft. So for our first pick overall, we chose Darkrai. Now, why did I start with Darkrai? First, obviously, it's on theme. It matches the vibes. We're going to give them bad dreams and we're going to poke them in the eyes. Darkrai has the speed that I was really missing out on last season. And I tend to make this mistake when drafting. And so this season, I actually used Tone's uh, list. Shout out to Tone. Uh, I used some of his drafting tips when I was drafting. So one of the main things I wanted was a Pokemon that had good speed. Now the drafting setup was very different this time around. It was split into tiers and we had points that we were able to use on those tiers. But each of the tiers had a, some of them had maximums. Like for example, you could only have one S tier, one A tier, two B tiers. You had to have a minimum of two uh, D tiers, for example. No overall cap on C tiers and also no overall cap on um, oh no there was a max of two E tiers as well so that really changed how I wanted to approach it so I wanted to secure speed very early and I wanted to secure something that I could bring to basically every matchup and have it do something here that was Darkrai now Darkrai has been through quite the change over time but for my team he is going to be coming and really just cleaning up with the speed tier and the spammable attacking type. Now paired with Darkrai, my round two pick was actually Primarina in the B tier. So I skipped over the A tier, picked up Primarina in the B tier. And that was because this was one of the best fairy types that I saw in the B tier. And it gave me some nice roll compression because I wanted a fairy type that could be offensive or defensive, but that had a way to get off the battlefield and that here is Primarina's flip turn ability. Also matches the vibes, check the hair. Now tell me that Primarina and Darkrai do not have the same stylus, you are lying. Don't lie to me, I will sing you to the Shadow Realm. I'll sing you to the Shadow Realm for fun as Primarina sings a dirge for your death. Now after Primarina, again we have our S tier, we have our B tier. I stayed in the B tier. My next pickup was our Caludon. Now at this point in the draft, things were pretty crispy and I had been able to pick up what I wanted to. I went with our Caledon next because I was like, I'm going to get some rain here in a little bit. It didn't, at this point, it didn't really look like anyone had necessarily targeted down either of the rain setters, and I was going to be okay with either one. 
I was like, okay, last time I picked up Torkoal round one, even though it was a wheel peck, but maybe you don't need to pick up your, your weather setter round one. Maybe you can grab some other things around that and fill it in later on. So that was my initial plan. Our Caladon is a Pokemon that is new to Generation 9 and one that I honestly don't have any experience with. But it forms a Fairy Dragon Steel Core very neatly with Primarina and with our Caladon's higher physical defense alongside Primarina's higher special defense. They can work very well together and make things very annoying for the opponent to break through. Now thinking that I had some time to pick up a Rain Setter, my next pick was Claude Sire. With Claude Sire, we pick up our Grounded Poison type. Once again, matching, just I, I, I was going for something that I had some comfort in using. And Claude Sire, well, alongside Primarina, number one deprives everyone else of a Grounded Poison type, a Grounded Bulky Ground type as well, and something that can set up a variety of different hazards. So here you can see outside of Darkrai, we have a lot of roll compression and Pokemon that can do a lot of different roles. And that previously in my draft was one place where I could have improved things is just to look for opportunities for one Pokemon that can do multiple things. Um, so Claude Sire was the pickup there. And honestly, I should have gone for my rain setter right in here is what I should have done. However, I decided to grab Reggie Alecki next because I wanted to use the shiny Regieleki that I got in Sword and Shield, which is the only Pokemon that I've actually ever done like a real shiny hunt for. It took me over 1600 resets to get it. And I was really bored by the end of that. But the next pickup was Regieleki. Um, alongside the Primarina, now I have a Flip Turner and a Volt uh, Switcher. So I have ways to get in and out of the battlefield and Regieleki on top of forcing opponents to prefer certain speed tiers and really forcing them to bring their ground types, which Primarina can take advantage of. Regieleki gets some other interesting moves like Rapid Spin and Screens as well. So multiple rolls, we're sticking to the theme. And I missed out on getting my Rain Setters after that turn. So I ended up going with Bronzong next. I originally was going to get um, Star Raptor in that slot, but I was not able to get Star Raptor. So I went with Bronzong just to have a steel type that was more defensively oriented and it would give me a trick room option. Um, Bronzong also was one I was tentatively looking at for a Terra Captain. Between Terra fighting for body press, the levitate ability to dodge ground type moves, and also heat proof to cut down the power of fire type moves, you can play around with Bronzong's Terra typing and still be protected by other abilities. Uh, so uh, a little bit of interesting team support in there between setting up Stealth Rock or Trick Room. It can also set screens. It can also, also set gravity. And then only then will the opponents understand the gravity of the situation that they are in going up against the Victorian Shadows. After that, I believe I got sniped again. And so I ended up leaving some picks with someone else, and fortunately he was able to secure uh, Grafai Eye for me, um, which I just want to point out too. We did the draft really, really early, and it was really, really awesome to have everyone basically on board and picking. That was really cool. What was not cool is that I picked things in the wrong order this season. I could have secured my Rain Setter. And I also could have secured Star Raptor, which you can see just from the team so far. Outside of Darkrai and Regieleki, kind of slow. Our, know, our Caladon isn't super slow with base 85 speed, but really slow overall. And that is why I wanted to go ahead and get that Trick Rumor option in there in case I needed to do that. But Grafii gives us two things. Number one, he gives us a more offensively oriented poison type. And he gives us an ability to get it on and off the battlefield in a prankster oriented way of course prankster allows non-attacking moves to have plus one priority and so in that way we can use either parting shot or we can use u-turn to get on and off the battlefield and this is another potential terra captain because this pokemon gets unburdened and because i failed to get the rain setter i was like okay i'll try to pick up some terrain in a little bit 
because originally I wanted Rillaboom and that didn't pan out. And then I tried to pivot and get the rain, but then I waited too long to do that too. So my, my timing in the draft was just really, really poor. In the theme of grabbing more speed, we pick up Lycanroc Day, and again, matching the vibes of the team. A werewolf absolutely matches these vibes. You might say, well, Necro, why didn't you get Lycanroc Midnight? And the answer to that is, is that it doesn't really have any priority moves outside of Sucker Punch. I was actually very tempted to get Lycanroc Midnight, just because it looks cool. I also wanted to get Lycanroc Dusk, but I already had two B tiers, and Lycanroc Midnight was um, a E tier, and you can only pick two E tiers. So I ended up with Lycanroc Day with the plan of, okay, since I missed out on the rain, maybe I can grab a Sandstorm Setter. Didn't end up having that pan out either, just for the record. But what is nice here is that Bromzong can set rain or sandstorm, and Grafii can also set rain. So even though I was not able to get the setter that I wanted, there's still some team synergy at play here. And this team really sorely needed a little bit of priority. And so rock type priority, which has no immunities, made a lot of sense for the setup that I had. After that, I ended up going with Lee Vanny for one of my E tier picks. Uh, primarily to give my team a good sticky web option and Livani is not slow. A lot of the sticky web setters bar um, what's its name? Ribambi are very slow and so this would force another team option for me to bring down my opponent's speed levels for some of these more bulky Pokemon but also just Livani has a lot of really cool utility moves is not that slow and uh, the typing fit in well with the team being a bug and grass type. Now, Livani is not going to be the type of grass type that I bring to every matchup, and I also wanted to alleviate some pressure on Regieleki being the only spinner for the team. And so, once again, I went on theme. Here, though, the theme was Livani and kind of knits them a very nice suit. And once they're all nice and comfy, we tuck them into the shadows because I picked up Bramble Gas next. Not only can it help out with spinning, but it also provides me a spin blocker for Claude Sire or Bronzong or Lycan Rock setting up hazards. And it is an offensive ghost type. I love an offensive ghost type pairing with Darkrai. Originally, I wanted Hisuian uh, Zoroark to pair with Darkrai. Um, but that got taken a lot earlier than I expected it to, so I ended up pivoting to Bramblegas, who was my number one backup for that slot. Now, Bramblegas isn't super speedy. However, it can uh, use priority Shadow Sneak, so we got another priority option here. In addition to having some utility with things like Strength Sap or um, Leech Seed as well, just for annoying sets. So that way I would have two different grass types. I don't think there's going to be a battle where I bring both Levani and Bramblegast. So this way I can pivot based off of the matchup. Up next we picked up Dodrio, which is a returning Pokemon from last season. Dodrio, again, I was looking for speed in these last few picks. And Dodrio also gives my team a nice... Bird Spam, I believe it is colloquially referred to as, so that way I can just keep on using flying type moves. Dodrio also would make a good flying type Terra Captain, and this time I'm going to put the head in the middle in charge. Last time I was really focused down on the demonic type Pokemon, and so of course the left head was in charge, but there were just a couple of battles in there where the left head didn't fully execute the way that I wanted it to, and so this time, the middle head will be in charge. Finally, the last pick that I had with my remaining points was Girder. I needed to grab one more D tier, and I went with Girder not only for the secondary defog option, but the priority mock punch that it offered the team. So now we have priority on several Pokemon, and I have a nice spread of different typings, and my top Four choices all complement each other very, very nicely 
just as far as their overall typing goes and the synergy between their capabilities. Now weaknesses of this team that I noticed right away are Darkrai is doing a lot of heavy lifting on the um, offensive side of things, maybe Darkrai and Dodrio. But the nice thing there is that those two are also relatively difficult to swap into if they're hitting on opposite sides of the spectrum. So I'm going to have a lot of fun this season throwing off a lot of Dark Pulses and um, hopefully just developing some really nasty plot lines that you all are going to be here to enjoy. Thank you all for staying here for this draft analysis for us. And um, yeah, I hope you all enjoy the team. I forgot to go over Terra Captains. I actually ended up picking Claude Sire, Bronzong, and Dodrio. The way that the Terra Captains worked this season is you had a Terra budget but it was only lower tier Pokemon could be Terra'd. So for example, Claude Sire could be Terra'd, but he would only get two Terra types. Whereas if I Terra'd um, something like Lee Vanny, it would cost fewer points and it would also get four Terra types. I ended up going with Steel and Dark on Claude Sire, Steel, Fairy, and Fighting on Bronzong, and Flying, um, flying Normal and Ground on Dodrio. Now the primary reasons here is that sometimes Claude Sire wants to shrug off one of those weaknesses, whether it's the weakness to Psychic or um, still having that immunity to Poison, but also getting rid of, say, the weakness to, um, to Ground with Dark. So I went with Dark and Steel on Claude Sire, and I really wanted to Terra fighting Body Press things with Bronzong, and Fairy is a good general Terra type for Bronzong as well. Um, I also like the idea of Terra Steel Water Absorb Claude Sire because he would only have the one um, one or two weaknesses left over from the Terra Steel being the fire weakness or the ground weakness. Uh, so that could bring some interesting mind games into play there on which type am I going to Terra to. And then Terra Flying and Terra Normal are really great Terra types on Dodrio. And it gets Drill Run, which means that it could be powered up in that Terra Ground uh, approach there. So overall, really excited for these Terra Captains. I I normally don't make changes to my team throughout the season, but whereas with the first like six choices of this team, I felt really confident, the back half of the team, I did not feel confident in. So stay tuned, we'll see if we make some changes, but you also know me, this is exactly the type of team that I can play with as well. So we'll see how it goes, stay tuned. And thank you for watching the draft analysis for the Victorian Shadows in the Pokemon Premier League Season 3. Goodbye now.